Hello, John. Good afternoon. I'm here today to look at your files for 456 Elm Street. So could you get that file for me, please? Thank you. Okay. Wow. Uh, let's see. John, the first thing I notice is uh, I don't see the sketch in the file. Uh, do you have a sketch on this property? I see. So you actually, you got the square footage from public records. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, so did you verify the sketch from tax records or did you just take the information directly and insert that into MLS? I see. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, now the second thing, let's look at your comparable sales, John. Wow. 28 comparable sales. That's quite a list, John. Let's see. Let's, let's you and I go over these. Oh, John, I noticed that you used an automated valuation service to pull all these comparable sales. And did you select the best comparable sales, you know, narrow that list down to the three, four, or five best sales? Oh, sorry to hear that. So basically, you let this computer program take 28 sales divide all of those to come up with an average price per square foot total. Is that correct? Okay. And then you took that average price per square foot and multiplied that by the square footage from tax records. Is that correct? Oh, John, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, let me tell you what's happening. First off, the owners actually did not like your listing price, and I guess it's we have a few problems here. The first problem being the comparable sales. Well, John, your subject property was built in 1989. It was on three acres. It had an in-ground heated and cooled swimming pool. It had a detached apartment with about 1,100 square feet, and it had a detached four-car garage as well as an attached two-car garage. Now, all of these comparable sales, 28 total now, were built between 2014 and 2019. They all have between 2,800 and 3,200 square feet. They're all built on a slab, and they're also all less than one-third of an acre. So, John, I'm afraid that your peers really wouldn't consider any of these as a truly comparable sale. So, you see, we have a problem with the comparable sales and the price per square foot that you came up with. You know, when you use larger square footage, the price is typically a little less per square foot. Now, what the owners did, they hired an appraiser to come out and measure their house. The appraiser came up with 2,320 square feet. Now, just based on nothing more but square footage, we've got a $15,000 problem here, John. Yes, that, 15000 that's a problem. Then, and let me tell you this, we also, once we heard from the owners, we hired two additional appraisals on this property just to make sure of what we had. Well, they all came up within two square feet of each other, so we feel pretty good about that. And then on the comparable sales and the average price per square foot, well, John, they all came up quite a bit higher than you did. So what the owners have asked me to come and speak to you about is, first off, let me tell you there's good news. They're not going to file a complaint with the Real Estate Commission. We're not going after your license. We want to work this out. You know, we don't want to hurt you. We just want to get what's fair for the owners. Well, in this case, between the square footage era, which a reasonable agent should have known a difference between 2100 and 2320, and I believe you are required to either measure the house or to have the information provided by a an appraiser or some other qualified professional. So between the square footage era and the difference in the comparables, John, we have a $32,000 discrepancy. 
So what the owner said asked is, let's just do this the easy way and not make a formal big deal out of it. So if you'll just give me the check today for $32,000, we'll call this quits right now. We don't have to pursue your license. Everybody will go away happy, and then you can continue to working and make that money up. So, John, do you have your checkbook available today? Guys, no matter what you do at the end of the day, size does matter. The square footage needs to be accurate. If I'm a real estate agent, I'm not ever going to measure a house, you know, unless it's a thousand square feet rectangle. Get somebody to measure the house for you. Let them carry the responsibility for that. Anyway, get make sure the square footage information is correct. When you're doing comparable sales, you know, automated valuations are great, but they don't understand what a comparable sale truly is. You know, in this case, the 28 comparables this computer program selected were all within a one mile radius, but none of them were comparable sales. You are the real estate expert, and it's up to you to decide what is truly a comparable sale. Take whatever list you get, work it down so that you determine what are the best comparable sales and then come up with your average price per square foot and apply that to the accurate square footage information. Don't let the square footage police come to your door, guys. Size does matter, so please make sure it's accurate.